Jake, you are a many member of the District Gate Workshop on Champaign Journalists. I would like to introduce Brian Shirk, ARBA judge and Champaign reader who judged had best of read Champaign Garden at the last minute. Hello, I'm Brian Shirk. I raised Champagne de Argens. I've had them for about ooh, four to five years now. And so we're really just going to go over the overall aspect of kind of what I look for when I judge champagnes and when I go through them in my own bar. Um, and if any of you have questions, just holler. So again, it's just a normal commercial rabbit. So when you think of the body type of a champagne, you're thinking of a well-developed shoulder that's thick, it's deep, it's got that strike, fine structure. It should be not really curving until you get to the back of that hip. It should be straight up out of that shoulder, hit the high point in the middle of the, the hip, and then round down. But still thinking of the rabbit, not the two-dimensional view, just the spine structure, but also in that three-dimensional. When you put your hands on the animal, you want a firm, wide shoulder. You want to feel a firm rib. You want to feel a wide, deep, thick loin that's filled all the way from front to back. That also keeps that width all the way as far down as you can into the lower hind quarter where you're going to find the widest part of a wrap. So when I when you go to pose them, they're usually pretty gently, gently posers. I like to square them up in the back end, um, get their feet straight, get their feet flat on the table, give them a slight tuck to them, and really just evaluate them by looking at them from the front, from the side, and then you go over the top. When you look over the top of them, you're really looking at that taper. Is their shoulder narrow, or does it give just that slight taper so it has a bold, a bold shoulder, it opens up into a wide chest cavity, and the wide chest floor. When I get my hands underneath them, you'll see me sometimes kind of roll a rabbit like this, but really what I'm doing is feeling the chest cavity. I want to make sure that it's wide, it's not got a point, it's not narrow, because I want a big open chest cavity to give myself a bigger framed rabbit. And then I'll also go over that spine, because I want to A, feel the structure of it, where does it start out of that shoulder? So if you look at this rabbit, for example, when I put my hand over to go through that spine structure to not only feel the muscling, but I'm looking to see where he has a slight, his arch starts a little early when he, when he starts to, or his, his roundness starts a little early when his spine starts to arch, and he kind of hits his high point in front of that hip. So you'll see he's got that flat spot where he's giving up depth of the body in the loin because he peaks too far forward. And a lot of that starts out right at that shoulder where he doesn't quite carry the correct chest cavity, and he doesn't quite carry the correct straightness out of that spine when he gets up into that into that uh, that body structure. Feeling that uh, with that loin is very good. Our rabbit show today is competing with a horse show, um, and they love to hear themselves talk on the microphone, so don't interrupt us a lot. Uh, but you want to feel that rib, make sure it's, it's open. So that's the other thing I'll feel, like how wide open is this rib? Is it a very narrow rib set to it? And is it firm? Because these rabbits are just like any other commercial animal. You want them to be hard-bodied, well-muscled, um, and a lot of that comes from genetics and well cared for. If you're somebody who doesn't water your rabbits as often, your rabbits are not going to be hard-bodied. They're going to be a little bit softer because water builds muscle. So when it comes to commercial tech, so they're going to interrupt us a lot because they're starting their, their horse and pony deal going on there. But, uh, so, you, so like when we look at rabbits and we start really looking at the back end of them when we move to that, which is the most important part, right? The hind quarters, which is 20 points. On most commercial rabbits, when we're looking at body type, hind quarters are the most important. And not, you not only need to be able to feel them, but you need to look at them visually. So when you set the rabbits up, it's super important that you properly post them. If you scooch them up and push them too far, they're going to be hollow and narrow at the base, hollow over the top. They're going to be tall as heck, but they're going to be narrow all the way through, and that's not the true look of the rabbit. So you need to set them up, make sure their hind feet are square before you look at them, kind of roll them back in, and then just take a look at them. You'll see, I always start from the top down, because that's just how I, I do it. I look at the top of the width of that loin, I look at the width of the loin, and I feel how far back it goes. So this rabbit carries its width fairly well. This rabbit gets a decent width in the front, but he starts to taper and get narrow at the back of that midsection. And then when you get to the base, he's, he's slightly narrow at that hindquarter where you'll see this rabbit has a much wider, fuller hindquarter. And also when you see when I move my hands down, him, the skin doesn't go with this animal as much because he's a tighter hide, he's a firmer fleshed animal where this animal, the skin kind of goes with me because he just doesn't quite carry the muscling or the tightness of the hide. He starts to get a little bit loose. And you'll feel that on some of those rabbits, especially in the front end of their shoulders, when they get those softness of their shoulders, and that kind of goes with them. Um, when I look at the top of the air rabbits, you're going to see just, you can even pull them up and set them. You don't even got to pull them to see the difference in width of body as you get through the loin from that chest cavity all the way down. This rabbit, 
he still leaves a tick more width, I would say, like in the opening of the chest cavity where he's slightly narrower at the front end. But when you get to this rabbit, uh, just sit up for the camera nice and funny. He's narrower all the way throughout. He doesn't carry open a big wide chest, and that also extends into a, a, a hollower loin and a narrower body about him. Uh, so judging commercial animals is pretty easy. Uh, when, it, when you think of the idea that they all, for the most part, have the same kind of body type. Champagne's the uniqueness of them is their color. And there's quite a bit of controversy in the color, but I think it's, I think our standard is pretty well written um, when you really stop and think about what words mean and how we speak. So the very first thing out of the box in the standard, it says for color, the body is to be bluish white. So when I think of how we name colors, I think of reddish pink as a darker pink. Bluish white, the base color means this rabbit's going to be a fairly white rabbit that has a bluish tint to them, right? Um, so when I think of that, I think of rabbits that are really bright and brilliant. The next um, big part of this that helps us, it says something about oh yeah, giving an old silver effect. So when I think of old silver, I think of when I was a kid and I would visit relatives that have that fancy little silver in their little china cabinets that's there and it's it's a very bright beautiful silvery shiny color and i think of that when i think of rabbits that are not quite what some people might consider on the lighter side of animals so you'll see lots of different shades and champagnes um, and varieties of color and and you'll see different varieties winning and there's a lot of parts of the that have to be considered. So there's a lot of these bodies that you would consider are correct. And there's some that I would consider are different. Can you see all of them from the rear? Yeah. Okay. So the number one thing that I always look for is I look at the balance of color. So when I take a rabbit out, I just want to look right at the balance of the color. And when I talk about that, I think, I think from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail. So the butterfly is a part of this breed that I think is really important that doesn't get enough acknowledgement because it really sets the rabbit. So you want that dark butterfly that contrasts with the rest of that body. You want to, the head should be as even with the body as possible. You'll see a lot of champagnes, not a lot, but you'll see some that have a really dark head and a much lighter body, and that's not a balanced colored animal. So for example, you look at um, the different shades here. This rabbit, he has what I consider an unbalanced color. He's, he's got a darker type to him, but his head is much darker than the rest of his body, so he doesn't blend well. He does have a dark uh, butterfly about him, but it's not really offset. This rabbit, I would say, has a pretty balanced body. She's got a slight darker head about her, but for the most part, what she has on her forehead, she has on her body. Similar with this rabbit. Even though he's slightly darker about his ears, what you see on that head when you lay it down that head would blend smoothly into that body. So I first, that's what I look at first when I look through my herd is rabbits that balance well. And then the other part is I start tearing apart the coats. So I start, in my opinion, I always start underneath because the hardest part I feel besides getting that old silver effect that's, that carries that bright color, that really bluish white opinion is that under color. It's insanely hard. So you just blow in, and you'll see, and if you guys want to come up closer, you can. And you'll see there's a variety. This rabbit carries a decent um, undercolor to him. I would still consider that too light. But as you blow in, you see different shades of it. And darker rabbits don't necessarily have darker undercolor to them. But you want the, the color to be jet black. These guys are born black. Um, and they change as they grow, but you want a super dark, as dark as possible undercolor, as down to the skin as possible. And then the next thing I look at before I get to the shade of the rabbit is I look at the guard hair. Because um, our standard says the first line is the colors we blue is white, and then it says the body is to be moderately and evenly interspersed with longer jet black hairs, giving the old silver effect when viewed from a distance. So that's why you'll see, like, when I judge, I, I pose them up and I step back. And because when I look at the balance of color, I want to see what they look like from a little bit of a distance, not over top of them, because you're going to lose a lot of the appeal of the champagne. But what we're talking about is if you get closer, you can see there's all these black guard hairs throughout them. 
So moderate to me is medium, right? So if you have this rabbit, I would consider it has the opposite end. She is a lighter. She's got that, that silver color that I like about her. But when I get over top of her, I don't consider that moderate guard hair by any means. And I don't consider it even. You'll see the black hairs are over the back. She, they're slightly blotchy in spots where she gets like, almost looks like she's broken in coat. But if you really pull it up, she just got, she just has a ton of black guard hairs in there. Whereas in the front, she's not as evenly in spurs. So she gets lighter in that front of that shoulder. This rabbit that looks much darker than the rest if you really pull him up, she, he has almost uh, too many congested guard hairs as well. But then if you get to this one, you can see here, this rabbit has just as many evenness of guard hairs. Obviously, we're not sitting here counting them. But even as she has what looks like the guard hairs are the same all the way through the rabbit. Just those black hairs that stick out. And they just look a lot. And that gives her this really pretty effect when you, get, when you see them. This rabbit has parts where it's got a good amount of guard hair in the right amount, but it doesn't have it even all over its body. So it looks blotchy, and a lot of that's through the, the unevenness of those black hairs. And then after I look through all those guard hairs, I really look at the length and the density of the coat because that's really important to me um, because the length and density of the coat is really what's going to set off the color as well. If you have a long, shaggy coat, you're going to start seeing more of that undercoat underneath them, and it's not going to be as clean and crisp as you want. But you don't want a completely short, short coat on them. So you just want that normal flyback fur that you're going to see on uh, each of these guys. The other thing that I like to look for is then I look at the overall surface color of them. When I look and I step back, even though this wrap doesn't have quite the immediate amount of guard hair, this is more of the shade I personally feel fits bluish white. But when I would go through, if I was like judging on color today, the rabbit I would pick with the best color would be this one here because he has that evenness of guard hair. She has the darkest under color. Is she slightly dark in color? Yes, she's not quite what I would call bluish white as I would call this one. But this one is blotchy, unfinished, not quite, um, doesn't quite have the density or the in depth and the depth of under color to her, that intense color. So you really have to look at the balance of the colors. Um, I think the bright white ones have to grab that one for me. Yeah. It's, it's super important. Now, this one is in a slight hole. Um, by slight, I mean, he's in a mold. But you can see, when you look at him, he's got the dark, he can still carry a super dark under color with the lighter surface color. But he's breaking, so his black guard hairs are not quite as even, his black hairs throughout, and he's got that right texture. He's not got a super silky texture. He's got he's got some give to his coat in that texture portion, but he's still, it's very smooth. He's just blotching unfinished. But if you look at the shades of colors, shade, I would go more towards this or this one. But when I look at balance of color, this is the rabbit that's gonna win in the end. Because even though he doesn't quite have the intensity of the brightness of that bluish white, he's got the evenness of the guard here. He's got the intensity of black under color. And he's very well balanced from his nose to his tail when you look at the evenness of color and the blend of it from the head here and the feet. One thing that I will say when you're looking at these, this is the easiest breed to hide your white spots in. Um, so if you have a good color, lots of times when you're judging champagnes, you got to take your time when you look at them. Um, because if you pull up, for example, you look through this rabbit, it doesn't look like she has any white spots. But if you pull up, she has one. They hide their white spots pretty easily because a surface color, if they blend in with it. So you really have to take your time to not miss those disqualifications, especially in those lighter, what I consider that bluish white color, because it's easy to hide them. Any question? And that's kind of how Brian Shirk looks at champagnes. Um, I don't really have any other things to say. Uh, do you have any questions? Do the coloring better on their feet? The coloring on their feet? That's part of the balance of color. You don't want rabbits with dark feet. So, and you'll see most champagnes are pretty true to, if you pick them up, whatever's on their body carries down their, their, their legs pretty well. So you'll see they blend. This is a breed that is, has that ability to keep his color through their feet. You see how they do that? And, but, it, but they also can keep those black hairs to their feet as well with their undercolor. So... It's pretty interesting 
I've noticed that I used to race Palominos and I would try to get my color down my feet as much as possible. And then when you go to champagnes, you're like, whoa, these guys just do it naturally. It's kind of nice. Yeah, so just think of a commercial rabbit. And then remember that fur on, or uh, color on these guys is 20 points. So that darkness and shade and that star hairs and that and the balance of color in the butterfly do hold quite a bit of points to them. If you don't have the correct color, I mean, if you think the color is just got off and you take all the points away, now you're at a B minus because you take away 20 points, you're at 80. And I highly doubt you have the other 80 points. So focusing on color is very important in these guys and making that decision of what is the right color is important because there's a lot of controversy about lightness to darkness on these guys. And I haven't really seen one that I consider too light in color ever. I have seen them where they're, they are got the bluish white color, but they don't have the correct black hairs to them. And that's what I think people get lost in when they're too light. But it's not too light. They just don't have the, the black hair that they need um, to really balance the color. Does that help? How old are they when they start changing the color? I think it's different on all the lines. So I've been blessed that uh, my lines all come from Chris and Willis Plank. Uh, and Willis and I work pretty much breed all my rabbits together and we, we look through rabbits together all the time. So I've noticed in my line of rabbits, um, the, they start changing right about that 10, 12 week mark. They start breaking on their feet. They start breaking in the color under their nose. And then usually by four months, five months, mine are full color. But they're really neat to have. I've had them for four or five years, and I've super enjoyed really learning about them. What was interesting is when I started raising champagnes, I kind of had a different view of what the color should look like. I was more of a kind of more what we see with a darker, not quite a dark body, but a darker bodied animal until I tear apart the standard and talk to some of the older time champagne breeders. And they're like, no, 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 dark is not right. We don't want those. And then so then I started really looking at the standard and trying to listen to the words, bluish, white. Oh. I was kind of thinking bluish and I was getting stuck at that darker color. But really it's the blue, there's no blue on these guys. The blue comes from that, that effect of the black hairs on that silver body. Any other questions? Does the color of their tar affect their lightness and darkness to their toenails? Mm -hmm. No, the light ones have just as dark of toenails as the dark ones. Toenail color's not usually an issue in this breed. White spots, yeah, because we can hide them. But white spots and weight. And DQ, um, when I judge, I'll DQ some for weight quite a bit. But for the most part, I guess not quite a bit. I'll DQ some, but... For the most part, these guys don't produce a ton of disqualifications, but I do tend to find more white spots in them than anything. Anything else? All right. well, thanks for having me. If you have any questions, feel free to just ask later.